I'm at CNF Precision today in Aylesbury. Now, this place is full of uh, a lot of blue machines, and in fact, there's two new blue machines since the last time we visited. And the blue stands for Matsura in this case. Now, not only is there a lot of blue machines, there's a lot of swarf being made in machining components like this. I'm going off to uh, have a chat with Mark and find out why they recently purchased the brand new MX520 five axis machine from Matsura. So Mark, this is your newest acquisition, this MX520. Tell me a little bit to start with. I know we, we were here two years ago, but for viewers that might not have seen that video, the other machines you've got from Matsura. Uh, we've got two 15 pallet horizontal machining centers, uh, a MAM 72-35V, uh, and then we've just purchased the MX520. So the MAM came in since we were last here as well, didn't it? What was the reason behind behind you buying that machine because that's a multi-pallet five axis yeah we bought the MAM uh, purely because it opened up another avenue of work for us um, we always concentrated on production work and it enabled us to do a lot of more smaller batches quick turnaround work and obviously full five axis capability Matsura talk, talk a lot about down or, or uptime rather than downtime how much is that machine running uh, to give you an idea uh, for the last sort of week to ten days that machine has been stopped for no more than probably five or six hours uh, it just keeps churning the work out. Which is key to you, isn't it, as a subcontract engineer? Yeah. Now, this MX520, then, this is the latest purchase. Did you just automatically go and buy another Matsura? No, no, of course not. Um, we looked around, we looked at many manufacturers, um, many different options. Obviously, the size of the machine was a bit of an issue because of space in here. Um, but we just kept coming back to Matsura purely because of the service we get from the other machines the quality of the build and, and the product of the part that it produces. Was the, the table a factor in that as well? Because we can see from this table here that we've got a fixed table as well as a C-axis integrated into it. What, yep. what does that give you? Um, well, the main reason we looked at this and we thought it was a, a good option to have is that we could obviously have the full five axis to get the brunt of the machine of a part done and then we could second op it within the same cycle so we had a part that come off complete without having to second op it on another machine. What about the speed of the machine? Was that, was that a factor, Mark? Uh, yeah, obviously, you've got to look at this. Um, we've got an 18,000 spindle on this, uh, and obviously that enables us to get a little bit more feed rates out of it than perhaps some of the other machines. Uh, and then obviously the speed that it cuts at with uh, all the different options you get on the machine, obviously it gives us an advantage over other machines. Take, can you take hold of this part? Yeah, because sure. I, I wanted you to just tell me, you, you're making this on the machine, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And what, what, well, how you're making it and, and how much faster it is as a result of the okay, MX purchase. So we, we make this effectively as a, a 3 plus 2 type part. We machine all five faces and then we turn it over and second op it. I would say we've reduced the cycle time on this by between 50 and 60%. As a result of the new MX520? Yeah, correct. Is the way you can access this machine important to you or was important to you in your decision as well? Because I know you've got like an apron at the top that you can load parts and get in from th this side as well? Yeah, obviously access is always an issue. When we bought this machine, it was obviously to do a, a larger envelope component, which obviously means a lot bigger billets. So on this machine, you've got easy access into here. We've got the uh, window at the top that opens right up so we can drop parts in from a gantry or a loader from the top. What feed rate were you machining that at, Mark? Uh, we would rough this at anything from sort of eight to 10 meters, finishing at anything from four to six meters, depending on the tool. And are you using uh, any coolant filtration or through spindle coolant? Yeah, there's through tool coolant on the machine, high pressure up to, I think, I believe 15 bar. Um, yeah, it's all carbide tooling as well to obviously get the speeds and cycle times up. And when you bought the machine, Mark, price is always a factor. Where was Matsura in amongst the competition? Uh, Matsura, they always seem to be expensive, but having looked around, we found it to be not as dear as you perhaps think. Um, for the value of service you get in the machine and really do get good value for money, we feel. That's why we decided to go for it. So you had a good hunt round and you came back to where you started? Yeah, yeah, of course. We obviously got a, a bit of a thing going with Matsura maybe, but we like them, they're reliable. Not saying other machines aren't, but we obviously keep coming back to it. So Thank you, Mark. Thank you.